What is going on everybody, it's Extreme here and welcome back to Blind Guardian. Now, if you're new to this series, this style of commentary is not the norm. Normally, this series features a post... No, actually it doesn't feature a post-edit commentary. Y you know, I I've tried to do this commentary a few times now, but fuck it. I'm gonna leave the flubs in because I just don't care anymore. Uh, this is supposed to feature a live commentary not a post-edit commentary, not a podcast, or anything of that nature. Unfortunately, over the last several episodes, you guys have had to deal with me talking about stupid shit while the gameplay goes on in the background. Well, hopefully very soon, like, I will be able to go back to doing the intended commentary style for this series, which is, of course, once again, a live commentary style. So... Yeah, if you're wondering why in this episode there isn't live commentary, well, when I went to record this gameplay and the gameplay you're going to see over the next few days, I was a moron, an idiot, and a douchebag, all rolled into one. I was in such a hurry to get the commentary recorded that I didn't stop to think maybe I shouldn't tinker with settings right before I record because that's exactly what I did. I started tinkering with the settings, and here we go. So, explanation out of the way. Yeah, I fucked up, and I'm a moron. All right, that all said and done, there's a lot going on in Destiny right now. We've had a lot of connection issues. We've had some glitches and stuff going on. S some not so fun times right now in Destiny for the daily players. And even the, the casual players are suffering from all these issues. And these issues suck. They're annoying. They're frustrating. In fact, just prior to this the gameplay recording, there had been a moment the day before where you couldn't get on. As in, it would broke. Like, super broke. By the way, what I'm doing in this piece of footage right here I'm trying to show you guys a ghost that's in the area unfortunately I think I already got this ghost so yeah yeah on top of all that not having a HUD makes looking for ghosts and things of that sort kind of difficult so I don't recommend you do that I really really don't um <laughs> it's not fun anyways uh so yeah, a lot of issues inside of Destiny the last few weeks, but hopefully Bungie is getting these things handled, and as we go into this Thursday's Bungie Day, we won't have so many issues and problems in the game, and hopefully we can just play the game and have fun. I love this game a lot, man. I spend a lot of time on Destiny, and I don't know, I'm just... What's the word I'm looking for here? I'm invested in this game. And if they don't do something to fix all the problems relatively soon, like, in my honest opinion, you're going to have a lot of dedicated players. Take a nice long break. I mean, you've had some pretty well-known in individuals stop playing Destiny because of the issues the game has had over the entirety of year two uh there's been a lot of connection issues in year two and to be fair it's not all bungie's fault as sirens go off in the background unfortunately they can only do so much when they are trying to build a game for last gen and current gen it just it doesn't work now going forward with the release of rise of iron it's coming out in a, just over two months now as the sirens just keep on going man damn dude seriously Anyways, um, Rise of Iron's coming out, and when Rise of Iron is released, as everyone probably knows by now, it is going to be exclusively on current generation gaming consoles. It will not be available on last generation, or as Bungie is referring to now, as legacy consoles. So, there's a part of me that says, cool beans, hopefully these problems get resolved and we don't have to deal with them anymore. But 
realistically, for the remainder of this game's life cycle, we're still going to have some issues. Bungie can only do so much, man. And unless they have found a way to truly separate this, you know, this game on next generation consoles as well as last generation consoles, I, I can't get used to calling it current gen. I don't know why, I just, I never have gotten used to calling it current gen. Um, until they get the, the split between the two generationals going, like actually going to where it's a legitimate thing. It's not just speculation anymore. And I don't know, I, I wanna see improvement, I really do. Especially because very soon, like, we are, be we are going to be getting our hands on our year two moments of triumph. And that actually is this Thursday, July 7th, 2016. We will be getting our year two moments of triumph tasks and or rewards. Now I say it like that because, well, if you're a year one player, you've already had to deal with this. But uh, in year one, when moments of triumph rolled around, we had a list of tasks we had to do. Okay, cool, we go do the tasks and then we wait two months to get the rewards, which the rewards, kinda shitty. Um, in, in all honesty, the the actual year two, or year one, sorry, Moments of Triumph, rewards was just an emblem. Yep. Now, to be fair, they added stuff later on, but uh, they were, uh, yeah, the, the initially announced reward for doing the moments of triumph was really fucking lame. Like, holy crap, this is lame. And uh, a lot of people were not happy with that. Me personally, I really didn't care. I mean, I was buttered about it too, but I didn't make a huge stink like some people did. Okay, maybe a little bit. But in any event, uh, year two moments of triumph are looking really interesting. As of now, the information regarding the year two moments of triumph that I'm going to be discussing for the remainder of this video is all coming from what was supposedly data mined from the Destiny servers a few months back when the April update was released. And apparently the way we're going to be getting our year two moments of triumph is through an SRL style book. You'll do the moments of triumph, you complete X numbers of moments of triumph, you get one of a couple different rewards there are two shaders there's an emblem and then when you complete all of the moments of triumph you get this uh exotic item and i call it an exotic item because in the database it is listed as an exotic item what it is exactly we don't know that's the thing where everyone's kind of like hmm i wonder my speculation is that for a long time now in the database there has been this exotic sparrow it's a good chance that that's what it is however for those that don't know this um there a while back bungie did something to the database so that they could hide stuff so for all we know this item has been there for a while now it's just been hidden and that's Kind of what I'm expecting is that the item we're getting is something they added to the game some time ago, but never actually released. So it could be the exotic sparrow, which would again make sense, or it could be an exotic ghost or some kind of exotic class item. Let's get back to the arc. I got a sneeze, so bear with me. Um, it's going to be something unique. A lot of people are thinking it's a weapon. I don't think it's a weapon for one very specific reason it's year two moments of triumph they want everyone from year two to get these items but they don't want it to be something that you can never get again and a weapon wouldn't be on that list you know i mean rephrase it again they want it to be something that you can only get from the moments of triumph and that you can only get it from doing this. So, in other words, you'll never be able to get it if you're a year three player starting out, or if you don't get your moments of triumph completed, you won't have this item. And that's kind of unfair to those 
that can't get it done. So, yeah. Uh, I don't see it being a weapon. I really don't. Then again, though, it could be it is, again, listed as an exotic item. What exactly that is, again, no clue. It's a mystery. We will probably find out more this Thursday when they do the weekly update. Hell, they may actually do the weekly update a, week, a day early. I was going to say a week early, but they may do it a day early just to kind of get us hyped for Bungie Day. They may even announce some kind of special event to go to coincide with the release of Bungie Day and the Moments of Triumph. Um, and my speculation is that it's going to be SRL. A lot of people speculate everything's going to be SRL. I know I'm one of those people, but it just makes sense. And the reason why I say that, again, is apparently the year two moments of triumph are going to be obtained by the means of an SRL style book. So you put all that together, it just makes sense to bring back the event that they've only done once, you know, like Queen's Wrath. Um, so we'll see. But thank you guys for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I apologize for being all over the place. I literally just woke up and my brain is not firing on all cylinders. I will be back tomorrow with a two-part podcast. The first part will go up tomorrow is what I'm saying. I will see you guys again very soon. Thank you for putting up with my incoherent nonsense this episode. I promise I'll try harder in the next one. Until next time, though, adios.